What's going on guys? This is a big blue Gundam. That is a box that's too big that it's so it's completely out of frame. And this is Master Grade Monday. I told you it was coming. You didn't believe me, did you? Especially you. You. Yeah. I knew it was you, Jason. You didn't believe me. Let's get to it. All right, guys, so on today's Master Grid Monday, I'm remembering to film the box part of the review. I'm sure if some of you missed it in the Double Zeta review. Though most of you probably really didn't care. Either way, so we have the quote-unquote P. Bandai. I, there's no reason for this to have been P. Bandai. It's not even the monochrome box. It's not even like a special release. So I don't understand. I, I don't understand why this was sold almost exclusively as premium Bandai. Um, but either way, it is the Gundam Mark V. But you wouldn't know that because you can't read it here, as I usually complain that the box is usually cut off by the lettering. Though it is some incredible, incredible art. You do have the... Um, those. You have that thing flying around. It's got the blue flames that are really cool. You've got a sparkler going on over here. That's really ridiculous. And considering that I'm filming this on July 4th, it's really nice to decided to be patriotic towards America. Quote I don't know. Is it, is it America in, in the future? I don't even know. Let's turn around. Oh, yeah. This is a seriously big box. All right. So we got obligatory front and rear view of our big Mark V boy. And you got the new Decides quasi psycho move. Thakanu mobile suit. Okay. You got head. The head gives off a sharp expression. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see here. We got images are illustrated purposes only. Well, let's add images for gimmicks. It's pointing at his crotch. Don't do that. Shield. Sure it is. Uh, there we go. The Orcs. Orcs 13. Right. Gundam Mark V decides quasi mobile suit. Uh, if you want to read that, go right ahead. I'm not going to bother because it's actually kind of hard to hold this out at this particular angle. You got the body and then markings. I didn't bother with any of the markings. You have to forgive me though. Eventually, I will probably put the big D on the legs. Okay. Uh, D marking indicates the moment the new decides. Okay, that's what I thought. I just wanted to know. Then you got all these things right here. Okay. Yeah. Box. Seriously. Uh, the Orcs 013 Gundam Mark V. It's a semi. Or Seiko, quasi, some, it's a thing. But I have it on that. Seriously. I've been packing all day. Arms are tired. Okay. And you got missile pods. Yes. Incomes. Oh, that's what that is. I'm sure it's an acronym because it's got a little S. Incomes can be unfolded and released. Gimmick can be recreated. Okay, cool. Beam rifle. It does beam rifle-y things. Big pink things. Weaponry. Yes, indeed. Beam cannons. Oh. Well, that's one way to do that. That's definitely stolen from uh, Double Zeta. No sh no. Yeah, look at that. Okay. You got, hey, look, PP, little guy with the toilet. You got PSPE, PVC. That's all your plastics in the box. I can't go too much further that direction. Why are you running into things? And you got to read the instructions. Don't tell me what to do, box. Illustration is by Yuta Otani, Planeta. And guess what? There's no amount of how much this thing costs, but it was expensive. It was 90 some odd dollars. And that was on the P Bandai website as a normal. P Bandai member. So uh, you're probably paying like 120, 130, 140, 150. Uh, it's probably in those range if you bought it elsewhere. And I apologize for that because that sucks. And if you go, well, that's pretty expensive for this kit. And I wouldn't argue with you, but it is a lot of plastic. Though, let's be honest, it probably should have been in a $65 range. But guys, that's enough for a box. I have stuff right in my hands. <laughs> Uh, let's get to the actual review. Guess what time it is, guys. That's right. It's turntable time. This will be the final turntable time here in this Shoki Cave. Alright, so as this thing spins and we do the slow zoom and pan downward of sexiness, the, uh... Let's just talk about the build of the kit. Honestly, 
I thoroughly enjoyed this. There was a couple trouble spots uh, with just getting some things connected. But other than that, it was actually fun. And given that it basically shares nothing that I can see with any other kit, um, with the exception, of course, of polycaps, but whoop de doo um, this was a lot of fun. I enjoyed the hell out of building this thing. And, uh, you know, I was posting pictures as I went, and some people were like, ooh, and then other guys were like, I don't like the chest design. No, I don't like the crotch design. That's what the guy said. And I said, well, that's fine for you. I like the crotch design. I think it's pretty cool. Um, you know, it, it's going to be one of those ones that elicits different feelings from people. And as I discussed with uh, Joey uh, the other day, and I believe Eric as well, they could easily do some retooling uh, to get the Dovin Wolf and the Silver Bullet out of this. And hopefully they give us like the Amaro custom or the... Uh, there was another variant of it, and I can't remember. Originally, there were three units. One was taken uh, and given to the D-Sides. The other one was kind of like Titans-esque, but not really. And then the other was stolen and turned into Dovin Wolf, or developed into Dovin Wolf. So, but uh, just the way the runner separation works out, you could really just swap out a few runners for new parts and like a couple extra new runners uh, for the leftover bits, and you could totally get Dovin Wolf and Silver Bullet out of this. So look forward to those uh, P Bandai kits in the future. So let's get it off the turntable and take a closer look. All right, so I'm gonna do this to the best of my ability. He is a big, big Gundam, uh, but so that kind of makes it a little difficult to do this. And uh, for those wondering, yes, you can remove the uh, missile pods. I'm going to try, but I have no promises. Normally I like to remove all the excess weaponry and accessories and stuff like that before getting into it so that I can show those things off separately. But let's look at his head sculpt and you can see he's got crazy, crazy daisy head sculpt in there let's see let's zoom in a bit looks very nice you can see the eyes do have metallic stickers you do have another camera right up front and the bigger camera on the top you got a very very pointy uh, v-fin thingies uh, those aren't in there very well um, and they kind of rotate so I don't know it gives you an idea of what angle they should be at but realistically you could kind of mess with them um, they don't really fix in place. At least mine don't. Yours might. I don't know. There's also a case of all of these bits are translucent, and then they give you green stickers to go on top of them. Also, you come around the back. You can see the other light sensor camera back there. And while we're here, he is just on a ball joint for the head itself. But then there's a big hinge there, and I believe... I thought there was a secondary hinge at the top of the neck. But he can look... Do some crazy stuff realistically. I'm gonna rotate over here. Sorry, my nose are still running from a uh, late dinner. I, you know, guys, I'm sorry. I can't help sniffles. You just have to bear with me. I'm sorry. Uh, the color separation on this thing is fantastic. I mean, you even get tiny little white things there. The yellow, the only yellow is just there on the collar. And that's just so you go, oh, yeah, it is a Gundam, isn't it? Even though it does, it is stretching. Stretching the definition of a Gundam, though it is technically a Gundam. And this is, for those, if you've read up on the thing, you know, it's kind of an offshoot of the Psycho Gundam uh, development that was being done. There were multiple levels of Psycho Gundams. There's also multiple levels of Mark numbered Gundams. Uh, you do have these big old intakes and or thrusters or whatever you technically think they are. I believe they're intakes for the big thrusters that are on the backpack back here these guys and then your incomes are hidden here we'll look at those later beam savers and or cannons we will look at that shoulders are pretty cool look at this you get a shoulder joint that can butterfly out give you rotation forward and back which is really freaking cool and uh you can rotate you just gotta have to navigate your beam savers ah get come on there balls I knew that was going to happen. I could feel it loosening. So that just clips on like a, a standard shoulder, you know, like that. But this gives us a chance to actually look at the joint itself. So you can get up to there. 
You can rotate the bicep, which moves this hose as well. It's a little stiff, but it does work. It has a single, it's either a single joint or a crazy double joint. I think it's a crazy double joint. Like there's an extra joint hidden, but uh, you get a lot of movement out of the elbows. Also, this is really neat. You get some side to side pivot on those elbows. I'll show it off more here. Look, look at this, look at this. That's on purpose. That's awesome. It just gives you a tiny bit more range of motion. Get on there. Also, the color separation here for the vents, the plastic, the little whatever those are, probably maneuvering thrusters. Apparently, this thing is so maneuverable, it can actually injure the pilot uh, if they're just going at it way too hard. You know, that, that's how you know you have a badass machine on your hands. Speaking of hands, you do get some. Uh, they are just simple ball joints into just little sockets there. So you get a bit of movement there, nothing uh, here, or maybe there's just a tiny rocker. Yeah, just the tiniest little bit of rocker there. You do get several sets of hands. We'll look at that in a minute. Chest, you do get nice chest vents right up front. Gotta love that. And then side vents that I did not clean up the panel lining. Excuse me. By the way, I did panel line it almost entirely in blue for the blue pieces. And then gray on the white and the gray. My gray markers are dead. <laughs> for some reason, all of my gray markers are dead at the same time. But here's something cool. You do get ab crunch to come down for some nice posability you do get an opening cockpit which is not easy but it's right here it does it does do the thing it's just kind of hard to there we go i got it and then it flipped itself back up cockpit opens up and you can see the pilot right inside the little psycho ball they usually have for these things now on top of that you do get enough rocker here as well in the waist which can also rotate around a good bit not all the way around because you're hitting those ridiculous uh hip hip skirts not side skirts they're really hip skirts because they are mounted to the hips which by the way more color separation the white part is separate the center part is separate this whole outside part is separate this is separate the thruster and that bit is separate the gray underneath is all separate and also totally on a hinge so that can be flared out that's so damn cool gotta love that now uh, a lot of people probably complain about the way the hips are they are just straight like t-bar hips not even ball joints but they do basically build up a universal in the hip hip so i mean you can't really complain the maneuverability is gonna suck but that's just due to the design itself and the hip skirt is on a ball joint and a hinge so you're not gonna do uh, a whole lot of splits but i guess it is what it is you can kick forward kick it out a bit and you can just do all the thing that's just phenomenal and they can go back a bit it does run into the front skirt but here's the cool part front skirt is on a double hinge out with some ball joints so you can really still get that maneuverability look at that i mean you don't need that but it's there and like I said, this isn't even a hinge. These are two ball joints and two ball joints. So you can really get your hip flat, your front and crotch skirt, or technically, uh, what did I call it? Um, cod piece. Also fantastic. Separate white pieces poking through, gray pieces underneath. Gotta love that. So back to the legs. Got thigh rotation, which is fantastic. You get... Lots of knee joints. You get one big old boy, and then it all starts moving again. And then it just comes up super nice. Look at that. Huge, chunky leg. Tons of articulation. But this is one thing I, I love when they do this. Look, okay, get the bottom joint to move on its own. Really nice white knee pad. Also, look at this color separation. White piece, gray piece, blue. That's fantastic white piece separate uh, blue pieces from the side and the front love that so very much come to the sides you do get these what i assume are thrusters here these are definitely thrusters these also can pivot in and out they also can well i was gonna say they rotate and now all of a sudden they don't want to i thought they popped out a little too they do have a little thingy yeah, they do move. I thought so. They're on a ball joint, so I'm like, why is it not moving? 
I think it's somewhat locked in place. Yeah, it is. Okay. So you kind of have to pull it out a little, and then you can move it. There we go. Also, great color separation back here. Love that. All of that. And then I believe this guy moves. At least I thought it did. I think this is just on the ball joint. Nope, that doesn't do anything. Apologies, by the way. Like, I just realized I'm like holding it only by like one leg, and it was totally stable. That should that should give you an idea. So a lot of people bitch about uh, poly caps. This guy's joints are mostly poly capped and some friction, and it's all fantastic. So you can shut your faces. Okay, so we got pivot joint here at the foot. You get the ankle joint itself can move up and down and rotate there. So basically nice universal foot action. These heel spurs. I guess I can come down a little. Whoa. Thumbs. Heel spurs can rotate really nice pieces that separate there. And you get crazy foot rocker. It can toe point really far down. And then you get the toe itself can pivot up for stepping motion if you're going to do it. And by the way, you know, with all this posability, you got to wonder, does it go on a stand, Shoki? Yes, yes, it does. It has one of these little uh, peg dealies that you can just dunk onto there. And now if you have a normal uh, action base for that, you can totally do it. I don't have any handy. Apologies. Uh, you do also get this little vent thingy. I don't know. I don't know exactly what that's for. I've got some crud there. It's got a couple little uh, things here, so it's kind of like a tail. Wee, so happy. All right, and then you come back here once again. We do have the thrusters and whatnot going on back here. These are on ball joints, and then these guys are on soles to come down. And if one is so inclined, you can... Uh, how am I going to get that... Hold on. I know what has to happen. It's just not doing it. Okay, so this guy needs to rotate forward. So it is a ball joint or like a pin with a hinge right here. So you can get these into a blaster or beam cannon mode. Like I said, just like the uh, double Zeta could. So you can see how some of that advancement totally comes in here, which is pretty awesome not gonna lie i mean it's it's silly but you can absolutely do it so let's go ahead and use this moment to move on to the rest of the weapons and accessories shall we so since we just talked about them here are the beam savers very similar in and of themselves to the uh, double zeta and, you know, small hole on one end, bigger hole on the other. And you do get the enormous clear pink chopsticks, as it were. You can't focus. Uh, which end is which here? I believe it's this end. Yeah. Let's see, does it matter? Yes, yes, it does. Okay, so you actually get friction here. So you do get big, ridiculous beam savers. And you do get two of those, as you would expect. Um, I did not show those off. Uh, I forgot to with the uh, double Zeta. Apologies. So one thing you do get besides the fist hands are, you know, other hands. And it does come with the plug-in whatever ones you want style. But these seem to be okay. And, of course, you do get some beam saber -y holding hands. I know I showed off the double Zeta holding the beam sabers. I just did not actually show off the blades, if I remember correctly. So let's plug that in. And that's definitely going to stress the thumb, so we're just not going to do it. But you could totally do that. And, of course, comes with versions for both hands. Though personally, never going to use these, ever. Like, I like them better as beam cannons. So, you get both of those. And it's super easy to install. You just unplug the hand. Pick up the next one. Now, the one thing, of course, you will have to watch out for, those are polycap wrist joints. So, down the line, 
if you abuse them or you give them something way too heavy to hold for way too long a time, it's going to be a problem. Sorry, they were rolling around in the box with all the shavings. So there we go. You can do, <laughs> you can do that. I might as well get a picture. Once again, he's holding his flame, flame effects, fireworks, whatever. So let's go ahead and yoink those off for the time being. Now, aside from the or these hands, you can do get jazz hands. You do get the the springy fingers, and just like the rest, it does plug in like so. So you can get some expressive hands if you want to. Now, I had, I think I had one set of expressive fingers along with a gun holding hand uh, on before we got filming. So that's cool. He could totally do that. And speaking of gun holding hand, let's go ahead and grab that. Once again, very similar to how we normally do. Trigger holding hand and got a tab on the inside. And fun thing you can do, you link the hand off, pull the fingers off. Take a blue handle, plug this right in there. So you can see a slot right there. Like it's it's not even like a guess. It's a this is the only place that plugs in. So you can do that. Plug the hand back together so you're not having to fight your way around the gun entirely. Plug that on. Set that to the back, and we gotta look at the gun. We're gonna look at the gun. It's a pretty cool rifle. Not gonna lie. I like the three prong thingy here. That's nice. And look at the decals here with the uh, the blue metallic. It's focusing on my finger. There we go. That looks awesome. And then you even get green there. More blue. And then again over here, blue. It's freaking cool. And the way this was layered was really nice. And that's where the handle plugs. So you just literally chunk, chunk that in together. And there he is holding his big ass but not unwieldy rifle. And I think like if you were to wiggle the elbow just a little bit, get a little bit better room and snug it in like that with a little bit of wrist action. And you get a nicely tucked rifle and get a little head cock there looks pretty cool now of course with the rifle you need something to kind of protect your ass a little bit and i'll scooch that back just a little bit and we got his shield and once again same kind of stickers and you can see they are meant to fit over textured sort of lens and get another one down here, which is really cool. All of this color separation is fantastic. There we go, lock, no, 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 no. Lock short, there we go. Son of a bitch, there we go. Color, color is all good. The why they did the vent back here blue, I'm not sure. Come underneath, you got some vents molded in here. Little dome thingy, little thing that mounts to everybody, and then little tanks. To do whatever now i did read that at some point it could have a shield booster very similar to a uh hazel unit um actually a hazel unit would be great to pull out for this but i can't get to them they're right here or literally right there i can't open that detail so you will come back here to the back of the arm and click it in and down and now that's locked into place it can rotate it's got a little bit of pivot to it um, but if you want to kind of use it you have to rotate at the bicep and get it around put this guard down that's like guarding the hose basically and then you can utilize the shield a little bit better but the thing about this is one thing i hate about uh shields that mount to the side of the arm instead of the i'm sorry to the back of the arm instead of to the side of the arm you just lose the articulation like it that's where one where you could I, I don't know just some something would need to rotate so that you can utilize the elbow to get that shield out in my opinion so I guess you could use it 
like this, but I mean, it's not exactly a, a shield shield, you know. I could see it definitely being more of a booster. Though you do actually have another option with it. You can pop it off. And I'm just rotating the arm back around like so. You have a mounting point back here. And I think you just leave it the same. No, you want to rotate it. Okay, so rotate this thing 180 degrees like so. So you want it pointed up. And then come in here kind of blind stab it and then whoop, really can't see it at all there we go nope come on come on big fella what the heck I know it works I've done it earlier oh you know what it is these guys are in the way Trying to suck them as high up as I can. Weird. Hold on. Let me see if I can get it to mount this way. Lock it in. Then plug it on. I mean, maybe that was meant to be the procedure all along and I'm just being a dummy. Because now you can utilize. Or you can't really utilize these that much. You can only pivot them. Um, but yeah, there you go. You can have that. Mounted to the back, but that way the thruster that's on there can sort of do its thing. I didn't consider the tail might be a problem. Let's, I mean, let's just try it the other way. I don't, I'm fairly certain that's not how it was meant to go, but I bet it's easier to do. Still same, same issue realistically. It's not wanting to latch. Weird. Either way, you you guys you guys get the point. I'll just go ahead and put it back on the forearm because that's where it just looks coolest. All right, so now let's talk about the incoms because it's the one. Oh, I'm not doing the incoms yet. But let's do the missile pods. I forgot about the missile pods. So missile pods are right up here, and they're badass. Um, I love the separation here. You can spread each one out. I also love that you get gray bits, other things, and then you get fully articulated doors that can do that number. And, you know, I thought about reorganizing them, but uh, I don't think that would work. Like, you know, switching them out so the doors open, like one inside, one outside. Um, I don't think it would work the way these things are constructed. Um, but they are super cool, I'm not going to lie. And you can pivot them, obviously, however you need to. And you can technically remove them, although I had a hell of a time getting them on the first first place. They can come off, and then you can close the shoulder. But honestly, it looks better. There's a there's a single little plug that's right there, and it is a bear to really get those in there. So something's not 100% lined up on the inside. Okay, so now that we did missile pods, let's look at the incomes. Because they're back here on the back. So these things are predecessors to funnels. For those familiar. And I like this because you can literally just slide them out. And then give a little pivot like that. Same thing over here. Like that. And then go ahead and unplug these guys. Now of course, early days, they're still playing with psycho controlled stuff. So they don't know that they can literally just control a thing. So what you need is a bit of wire. I give you two. I'm just going to do one for the time being. Plug that on there. And then you get these little round guys. Hold on, I'm going to do it this way. So it's almost like a spool, which is interesting. And I have not messed with these at all. But I like how that gives it some... I realize you can't see what I did there. Gives it a little bit of rigidity. Then you come back here and you blind stab the actual income into place. I guess in theory you could 
Move these a little bit further out. Give it some more range. Like that. <laughs> like, I mean, it, it works. It's just kind of flimsy at best. So let's, let's mess with this one a little. So let's get this one out. We'll get our wire. And we'll go a different direction. Let's go down with it. So we can come up and then down. And then we'll go this way. And of course, they don't give you any, like, effect parts for these guys. Because heaven forbid. Now, I have no idea if these, if those discs are supposed to be at certain intervals. Or they're literally just wherever they need to be at any given point. But, I mean, you can, that's how you get your stiffness out of them, so to speak. I mean, it's really dumb. Um, like, it's not, it, it's not a great system. <laughs> But I guess it's it's what it do, you know, wire controlled funnel type dealies, you know, that's that's about as much as I want to play with those. But of course, I had to show them off. Um, it just it's it's silly, it's really silly, in my opinion. Um, so I'm gonna remove that because I just I don't, I don't like it. And if you like it, cool. If you like it, you win. That's pretty much how you do. And of course, if you don't like it, you also win. You're just less happy than everyone else. Who does like it? So that's just that's just what you do. Okay, so let's push that in. All right. I'm gonna give him back his beam sewers real quick because I want to. I'm gonna try to do a comparison. I have one thing I can probably access, and it's probably the best thing to compare it to. So I'm going to do that, and hopefully I don't have any issues. So I'll be right back. And there we go. So you guys remember, he's that guy, big old double Zeta. Still a ridiculous handful, just trying to get him back together briefly just for this. Um... And I'm going to say it. So that was the last Master Grade I built. This is a much better kit. Uh, that is finicky and ridiculous. Now, mostly that do, that's due to the design of it, of the Gundam itself, and the combiner and transforming aspect. This doesn't have that problem. It can be a much more solid designed thing and just be better in general. And that's why I prefer it. Um, but there you can really see a huge, huge size difference. And I mean, these beam sabers, which are you know, taller than the Gundam itself here, you know, they're just kind of near the head on this guy. So significantly large, large thing, you know, and one thing that's crazy about it, just reading up, you know, about the Mark V itself. So within the story, it was sent to go, and I guess it was in uh, Sentinel. Um, it was sent to go attack whatever. And it encountered three uh, phases. So, full armor double Zetas. It destroyed all three double Zetas. But then it was taken down by the XS Gundam. So, that just lets you know, uh, even though as ridiculous, as powerful as this thing was, the XS was actually bigger and badder. So, that's just, you know, a concept for you to really wrap around your brain. It took out three phases at once at the same time it took on three of them and beat three of them uh, that's how badass this guy technically is and as a kit very good it was fun it was enjoyable it was something different nubs are really not that bad on any part of it uh, there's a couple spots where I, I definitely have some scrape marks but that's due to my knife not due to the plastic or the nub location i do wish it was undergated more specifically on darker parts so, I mean, the dark bit of the rifle and the feet. I would just wish it was undergated. Uh, it's just something that Bandai does not utilize enough of. The articulation is pretty good, if not really good, for something this big. There's stuff that moves where you think that, oh, that, that actually should do something? That's pretty cool. Very poseable, even for a big, chunky machine. I wish the shield could mount to the outside of the arm instead of the... Uh, 
elbow, but it is what it is. The missile launchers, whether you choose to use them or not, are fantastic. And just everything is cool. I think that the only really limiting factor is the income wires. The incomes themselves are fine for what they are. But guys, that's going to be it for this Master Grade Monday. Hope you have enjoyed it. Like I said, this is going to be the last one of the last big things here on the review set in this version of the Shoki Cave because we are moving. So there will be a brief hiatus. I'll have as many reviews up in that amount of time as I have filmed. <laughs> I still have one last thing to film and it's a guy in a little green box. So that will be coming out eventually. But guys, until then, I will see you on the next one. And remember, as always, keep on building.